we have Nicole Kipperlove joining us. Bear with me for one second. So America, <laughs> say America, but Nicole is currently working for a company known as the America Fund, eradicating wokeism in the military and candidate education. That's her current position. But Nicole is a former Duke grad. Um, she's political consultant. She's former congressional state secretary to Elise Stefanik, city council chief of staff of Vicki Palladino, who was our guest speaker last time. New York State Senate Legislative and Comms Director. She comes with an extensive resume, and it is an honor to have her join us today. So come share some knowledge, drop some knowledge. <laughs> and fellow Gen Zer, man, we need more Gen Zers here. Thank you so much. It's always so hard to follow two really great speakers. So, Maria and Peter, great job. Thank you so much for all the great information. Um, before I give a little bit of background on myself, I'm just going to take a moment, and Vanessa, you know what's coming, to thank Vanessa for everything that she's been doing. Vanessa is one of my closest friends and mentors. She's really phenomenal. I was there when she started Gotham Rising. I helped her a little bit with her campaign. And just to see all the incredible things she's done and how she's, you know, she's been paying it forward and, and passing on valuable knowledge that she's acquired is just wonderful. It's I'm so honored to to be her mentee and to have her as my role model. So let's just give a round of applause to Vanessa. So as Vanessa mentioned, I've worked in government and politics, mostly New York State focused for the past few years since I graduated in 2019. I started out in the New York State Senate. Well, actually I wanted to go to law school first, but then I figured I would start working on a career um, before that. So I started working in the New York State Senate for State Senator Phil Boyle, who to date is one of my favorite people, another great mentor. He taught me everything I know about government and politics. He laid an incredible foundation for me. Um, getting to know Suffolk County politics and government through him was an incredible opportunity, especially because I am a, a Long Islander, born and, born and raised. Um, so I started out as a legislative aide and then worked my way up to his legislative director and communications director, and that was after I ran his re-election campaign. We won by a 20% margin. That campaign was the very first political experience I had ever had. Um, I grew up talking about politics at the dinner table because my mom's actually, um, she was a revolutionary in Bulgaria. She worked to bring down communism. So my family has a very interesting political history, but I was always focused on academics. And then when I ran uh, Senator Boyle's campaign, uh, that was me just kind of getting thrown into the political world, which honestly sometimes is, or most times is the best way to learn something. Um, after that, I ran a, a few other races. I was um, District Attorney uh, Ray Tierney's press secretary for his campaign. That was a very interesting experience. We flipped that seat in Suffolk County, which hadn't been read in a very, very long time. So that's where I got the bulks of my comms training. Um, after that, I joined the New York Young Republican Club uh, as the campaign's chair. So I've been the campaign's chair for the past close to two and a half years. I got involved in city politics at that point, and then I became uh, the council member Vicki Palladino's chief of staff. We dealt with some pretty important issues when, when I was there. We worked on the drag queen story hour scandal. We worked on reinstating all of the workers who had lost their jobs because of the mandate. So we did rallies and press conferences and put a lot of pressure on the administration in the New York City Council and Mayor Adams' office to, um, to reinstate those frontline workers who had risked so much for us. Um, and then after that, I started the Women's Caucus, the New York Young Republican Club, building up a, um, a momentum of conservative women in New York City. And Vanessa has helped me with that so much and just been so valuable as, as an advisor in that. And then I uh, was Elise Stefanik's press secretary, political spokesperson, so I moved to DC and now I'm working for the America Fund on two big initiatives. I'm working with Congress to eradicate 
wokeism in the military, um, which is obviously a, a you know very lofty goal, but it's it's really an issue that is so important and um, not not too much is known about it and not too many people are working on it so this is really a great opportunity to bring more light to it and how it's a direct threat to our national security um, and the other initiative is candidate training which we're working with candidates from all across the country on uh, helping them talk about controversial sensitive topics such as race Right, that's something that, um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this when I talk about crisis communications and get out the vote, but essentially Republicans have always had a tough time talking about sensitive topics, and that's something we want to change because we want voters to be on our side when these controversial issues inevitably come up in campaigns. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about deployments and get out the vote calm. So, you know, a, a little bit of tidbits of in information about how to do deployments and comms in the final days leading up to election day. Um, before I dive into that, I, I just want to make a point because I think this is this is often overlooked and it's so important. As the candidate, and you know, obviously this goes for your campaign staff as, as well, but Get out the vote those final days before election day, obviously very important. But I cannot stress enough how important everything you've been doing up to that point is. You've been laying the groundwork, you've been building up the foundation, and frankly, yes, there are exceptions, but if you haven't been doing the work, if you haven't been building up your brand, your reputation, if you haven't been doing deployments, if you haven't been doing deep canvassing, Get out the vote, and the last few days is not going to win your election. I think that's very important because far too often I'll see candidates who will they'll call me up a month before election day or two weeks before election day. Hey, my campaign's not doing well. Can you can you help me? Can you fix things? And I'm just like, no, because you know you need a miracle at that point. So as important as get out the vote is, as important as those last few days are. And they really are important, and yes, they have flipped races, but flipped seats before. Please make sure that you have all your ducks in a row well before that, because that will also make get out the vote so much easier on your campaign staff, and you'll have so much space and ability to, to be prepared for any curveballs that may be thrown your way. Um, in those last few days leading up to election day. So deployments, I've been, like I said, the campaign's chair at the New York Republican Club. And by the way, I just want to thank Peter so much. We've been working with the New York State YRs and they're, you know, they have been so supportive of us. Peter, you have been such a great colleague. So thank you for everything that you've done for us. Really appreciate that. Um, the NYYRC is chaired by, uh, I just, is headed by Gavin Wax, who also has been an incredible mentor to me and someone um, who I look, look up to tremendously. So working on the campaigns committee, I've learned so many things over the past few years, how to get people engaged, what works, what doesn't. We've thrown some of the biggest deployments in the state. We've helped flip seats both in the city and on Long Island with the New York State YR's help. And, you know, I've learned that there's there's just so much that goes into deployments, especially if you want them to be effective. Timing is incredibly important. Strategy is important. Your get out the vote strategy should ideally be a little bit different than your political strategy, you know, three months before election day, right? Who you send out to canvas is important, especially if your district contains different communities different people who have different needs and who are concerned about different issues. It's really important to be able to understand the nuances um, in what different people in your, in your district care about. Um, which EDs are you targeting? What message are you conveying in the field when you're doing deep canvassing? Have you taken the pulse of your district? Do you know what the people are concerned about? Some questions that you may want to be asking when doing canvassing and, and throwing deployments. How has the strategy shifted or changed since I started my campaign? Have I periodically 
taken new developments into consideration. That's really important because you can have the best campaign plan that you start out with, and it's always a good idea to have that as a roadmap, but things change, right? Breaking news happens. There are certain stories, even nationally, that may affect your district, even if it's a local race, um, in a very significant way. And that's, it's really important to have taken that into consideration. What are the issues that are currently the most important for my voters? Have you done polling in your district? Which EDs have I targeted and how have I targeted them so far? Digital ads, palm cards, events, lawn signs, direct mail, text program, phone banking, flyering, mass emails, all of these are different ways of targeting the different electoral districts within your district when you're doing canvassing. And, you know, it depends on your strategy, but ideally, the voters who are very likely to vote for you, or you know, even moderate swing voters who may who may end up voting for you, ideally you should have touched them in different ways several times. It's not enough to do three deployments in the last two months of your election, especially if you're trying to um, flip a seat and just send out a bunch of people to go and knock on doors with you know, door hangers and palm cards, right? Have you targeted those people digitally as well? Have you sent them maybe three or four mailers that whose sequence makes sense in terms of your campaign message? Um, you know, voters most times have, you know, pretty short memory if you start targeting them at the beginning of your campaign, which is a good idea. Um, you have to make sure that there's follow through and that you're consistent. You have to make sure that you're monitoring what your opponent is doing, especially in the days leading up to election day. And take all of that into consideration as you plan your deployments and figure out, okay, who could really benefit from another door knock versus, you know, another mailer. Um, what is the critical message I want every person in my district to truly internalize in these final days? And this goes into um, communications and your communications staff. Ideally, you know, everyone on your campaign should should know the message incredibly well that you want to convey. And it should be a very clear message that all of your voters at that point have internalized and are being hit at with from all angles. Um, Recruitment and engagement, just a few points on that. You know, obviously this isn't something that you want to start doing in the few days leading up to election day, but it is something that I think is worth mentioning and something I've learned that learned about um, while I've been the campaign's chair at the NYYRC. You want to make people feel like their work matters. So if you get, you know, 20, 30, 40 people out on a Saturday morning to door knock. Every one of those people, every person in that deployment should feel like they are going to help you win this election. And I know that sounds really obvious, but I've gone to many deployments where that hasn't been the case and people are confused or they don't know what they're really doing. What, you know, I'm one of 50 people here. How am I contributing? We're in, a, we're in a deep blue state, we're in a deep blue city. How am I going to make a difference? This is impossible. This is the overwhelming mentality here. And while that's not good, that's just the reality. And it's your job as the candidate, it's your job as the campaign staffer to convince your volunteers that that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. That they are an important part of your campaign, that there is a chance um, and, and that this, this can be one. Um, it's also just as important to make sure that your volunteers know what they're doing, that they're not just going up to a door, ringing a doorbell and reading your campaign platform from your website, because that's not effective. Voters understand that you're not being authentic if you do that, right? So obviously this is a lot of information and there's so much more that can be said about this but this is just a general overview, some questions, some points to really think about and consider that I feel are far too often overlooked. Some of the best memories I've had working in politics has been through, on deployments. Um, I remember when 
we did a couple of deployments from Vanessa on her campaign, and um, we, you know, we had, I think it was two or three days, full days of deployments, and it wasn't that many of, a, many of us, but we went out into the district, and we did deep canvassing. We talked to voters. We spent, there was, there was one household, we spent probably 30 minutes to an hour talking to those voters. Um, and you know, one of the things that I, I always give this example because I, I think it's so important to understand how important government is for, for, for people. Um, you know, they, the voters in that household, or you know, the people who live there, they were Democrats. They had always voted for Democrats. And here we are, these you know, Republicans going up to them, ringing their doorbell and asking them to vote for a Republican candidate. And they said, no one has ever reached out to us before. Like, yes, we're Democrats, but, and we, we vote for the same state senator every time. We vote for the same city council member every time. But no one, but no one has ever come up to us. No one has ever asked us, what are the issues that we care about? And the, the number one issue those people cared about was putting up a stop sign at the end of the street so that they could feel comfortable when their little kids would go out and ride, ride their bikes. And their local city council member could not provide that stop sign to them for years. But Vanessa, because she was such a great candidate, she went up to them, she talked to them, she even gave them resources even if I'm not elected, this is what you should do. And no one had ever done that before. And I think this is an important point and an important story because people, in a, in a lot of ways, want basic things. They want, just like us, we want, you know, we want to feel safe, we want to feel comfortable, we want a high quality of life. And our electeds are not providing that. And if in your campaign, if through your deployments, you can make those voters feel like you're going to change that for them, then you've already won on so many different levels. And that should be your goal throughout the whole campaign and in the final days leading up to Election Day. So I'm just going to touch on communications in the final days before Election Day. Um, first of all, basics. You definitely want to keep your voters informed, make it very easy to vote for them, especially if uh, you've convinced some, you know, new voters to vote for the first time. People don't really have time to go look up their polling place. They don't really want to be bothered with that. They're working, they're whatever, taking care of their kids. So um, make sure that through your comm strategy, email blasts, social media graphics, keep your voters informed. That's pretty basic. Um, again, at this point, if you're running a serious campaign, you know what your voters respond to, you build up your name and brand, you've captured their attention, so that everything that you put out in those final days before election day, you don't, you don't have to worry about whether the people you're targeting are going to read it or not, or absorb it or not, because you've already put yourself in a position where they are doing that. Um, you know that your content those last few days is going to get a lot of traction. Now is definitely not the time to test out what works and what doesn't with your voters because it's too late. Make sure that all of your separate communications campaigns are all running together effectively. It obviously depends on what level of government you're running on, right? So for local races, um, you know, even in, even in the smallest races, there are bound to be different communities within your district and I always, I always say that it's a really good idea to run separate communications campaigns for all of those people. But obviously you want all of them to be working together and you want to get your core message across to everyone, right? So while those communications campaigns are going to be slightly different and nuanced, you know, they should all be working as part of your campaign and according to your central message. Crisis communications. This is the last point I want to make. Um, I love crisis communications. I think it's really fun. I think a lot of candidates might disagree with that, but I think for the comm staffers, um, or I guess for the comm staffers, it could be very stressful too, but I do think it's, it's a lot of fun in a lot of ways. Um, you need a strategy for damage control. If you're in a nasty race and your opponent tends to attack you and is you know, threatening to bring out something about you that you're 
worried about, you should have a strategy in place for damage control. You should have a really good comms team, comms director, press secretary, whatever, whoever's on your campaign in, in, in that respect, and make sure that you have a plan in place. There is nothing worse than running a great campaign and then in the days leading up to election day, your opponent releases something about you, drops a bomb, and you're completely unprepared for that, for that because that does have the ability to torpedo your election. So anticipating an attack in those final days is really important. So there's so much that goes into comms. I think, like I said, political comms is such a such an exciting field, and I talk a lot about this with candidates, and you know, you can always contact me if you're interested in learning more, but that was just a, a, a preview of some of the things I, I like to talk to with candidates, um, talk about with candidates in terms of the final days leading up to election day and what you can do to have an effective comm strategy um, in those last few days as well. Um, so I know we're running out of time, but if there are any questions, I'll address that at the Q&A at the end. Thank you so much, and um, Vanessa, thanks again for